Welcome to Can of Conversation number 899, our advanced Christian series. Today's topic, everybody's favorite topic, money. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6.10 that the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So it's important that we understand money uh, since the love of it is a very bad thing. I mentioned last time about happiness versus joyfulness. And happiness, a lot of times people derive happiness from money. <coughs> that if I have a bunch of money, I'm happy. If I lose a bunch of money, I'm depressed. The stock market crash in 1929, it's been reported that people uh, jumped out of buildings uh, and committed suicide when they lost a bunch of money. The, uh, just in the news this last week, some cryptocurrency guy I don't know, made the cryptocurrency go down and I think he lost a whole bunch of money and did some kind of scam with it. I, I don't know about it, but I know that um, I can tell you that the person was not so happy after that happened. <laughs> uh, so, if happiness is tied to money, well then that's a, that's a problem. Now, uh, money itself is not bad because what am I doing? I'm driving to work, going to work a job. Come on, I mean, I spend most of my time five days a week doing a job for the sole purpose of getting money. And so there's nothing wrong with it because I need money to pay for my house, my car, my food, clothing, utilities, uh, you know, it's necessary. But the thing that is the root of all evil is not money, it's the love of money. Which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. People err from the faith because they love money. It's where your heart is. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. So if my treasure is that I want to get rich, they will be rich, fall into a snare and many hurtful lust. First Timothy 6, I think it's verse 8 says, just a couple of verses before the love of money is mentioned. So, you know, if you let's say you're born into a rich family, you have billions of dollars, and um, and so you don't really care about money. It's just something that you've always had and you don't worry about it and you're taken care of. Well, that's just great. But um, if you're the type of person who is spending the time and energy and the focus on trying to get more money, and then when you get a bunch of money, then you, um, you know, that's what you want. It's like you got to have money coming in, not money going out. So even though you got a whole bunch of money saved up, you're in retirement, and you don't need, uh, you know, a bunch of money, you still won't spend the money that you got you know if it's it's all the point is that when it comes to money it's all about your attitude and the reason that money is so important I mean even God even Jesus said about how uh, you can't serve God and mammon m-a-m-m-o-n mammon and mammon being the basically the God of money so you're either gonna love God and hate money or you're going to love money and hate God. You can't have both, is the point that Jesus was making. So it's important that we understand, well, why is money such a big deal? Again, I can, I, I spend a lot of time trying to acquire money because I need it to live. But it's not, again, it's not the money, it's the love of money. And the reason is because money is, first off, uh, we mentioned last time about happiness versus joyfulness. If we are following money, the reason that people love money is because they love the things of this world. Because that's what money buys, is the things of this world. So if I'm pursuing after money, and just for the, because I want more things, then I'm pursuing after the things of this world, and so then I'm not loving God, but I'm loving the material world. That's the issue. And the reason it's so important is because it's not a it's not a God-given system. Basically, it's a system that man has created. God's system, and I've said it before, that 
the currency of heaven is love. And heaven, I, I don't have to worry about having a bunch of gold or a bunch of money. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll live on love. It's the, God's love comes through me as I live. I live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And since God is love, if I'm living by God's word, then I'm living by love. I'm giving God's love out to others. God commendeth his love toward us. <coughs> And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So I've received God's love the moment I've recognized my sin and trusted in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for my sin. And then I give God's love out as I live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So the currency of heaven is love. But in this world, it's all about... And that's, and that's because love is the ultimate when it comes to the spiritual things. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Now abide these three, faith, hope, and charity, but the greatest of these is charity. So in the spiritual realm, love is, the, or God, or charity, which is God's love, is the ultimate. Well, in the material world, the ultimate is money. And the problem with that is that money is a very fleeting thing. You need to understand when it comes to money, it's like, let's say you got a dollar bill. Um, the United States dollar bill says this note is legal tender for all debts, both public and private. It is, um, there's no real worth in the money. It's a piece of paper, and in the U.S. it's a green piece of paper. It's, uh, you know, the only reason that a dollar bill is worth a dollar and a hundred dollar bill is worth a hundred dollars, a hundred times more, is because the government says it is. Somebody took a piece of paper and printed a one on one on a dollar bill, and somebody took a same same exact piece of paper, using the same ink, the same color, and everything is exactly the same, except you know the design on it's different, and instead of it being worth one dollar, it's worth a hundred dollars. Well, intrinsic value of that actual paper and the ink is uh, very small. You know, I don't know, maybe worth a penny or two. I don't know the actual value of the paper and the ink. And the actual value of the paper and the ink for the dollar bill is exactly the same as the hundred dollar bill. There's, there's no difference in the intrinsic value. It's just that the government has said, this one is worth one dollar and this other one's worth a hundred dollars. And those numbers are arbitrary anyway because things, prices of things change. We've seen that a lot the last couple of years. Inflation rate's been high. I know at work we have, uh, you know, working for the government, there's a state contract that we have with a company that provides our paper. And they had a real good deal that we had. Well then, October 1st, 2022 was the new year, the new fiscal year. And so we had a new contract, exact same company, providing the exact same paper, but the paper cost went up by 59%. Uh, so before it would cost, and I forget what, seventeen dollars for a for a case of paper, and now it's costing uh, thirty dollars. I don't remember the numbers. It's got, yeah, that not, not, wouldn't be quite thirty dollars. I'd say twenty-eight, um, twenty-eight dollars. So it's not that the paper I'm paying fifty-nine percent more for the paper today than I was three months ago. Well, why is that? It's still the exact same paper. It's just the, the value of that money is considered to be less now. That's why prices go up, is that the value of it is less for, you know, for all the economic factors and everything related to that. And so what it shows is that because there's no intrinsic value in money, it's just made up. It's arbitrary, which means it can be manipulated, which is exactly what's happened. That's why the paper cost of paper went up 59% for us. It's just the prices have been manipulated, so now it costs more money to get the exact same thing. When there's money involved, it's it's controlled. You know, our, and I don't want to spend a whole time talking about money, but basically, the Federal Reserve was created and they issued debt, and now the U.S. Treasury, the United States government, owes debt to the Federal Reserve, and that's why uh, that's how our money system our money system is based upon debt. So it's not based upon gold or silver or anything that has any 
intrinsic value to it. It's just based on arbitrary numbers. You know, I could create pieces of paper, put a hundred on it, or create one that says a thousand, or I could put one that says a million on it. But the reason the United States government's money is worth that what they put on their paper and mine isn't worth a hill of beans is because people have agreed to go by and accept the money that the government has provided. If I get make a piece of paper, I write a million on it, and you say, how much you want for that house? A million dollars? Okay, here you go. And I hand you my piece of paper. And I gotta take that because they they say, well, we don't accept that. I mean, it's the same, essentially, as what the government did. I took a piece of paper, I could even cut it to the same size. I could even use green ink to write my million on there. I could even put a picture of me on there. You know, I could try to make it look like uh, what the government would issue, but uh, it's not going to be accepted, whereas the government's money is because it is a, um, because we put the faith in what they create. So money is just some arbitrary thing. So I create the million dollar bill. No one puts any faith in that. They won't give me anything for that. But the government creates their bills and people um, accept that as money because of the faith of the government is backing. They have faith in the government that issued it. And so we have this money system. So the point is, since God did not issue it, you know, like gold or silver, well, that's something that God put in this world, natural resources. It has value. But since money is something that government created, it's arbitrary value, then what it means is that God isn't controlling that. It's the government that controls that. So uh, the authority and the power belongs to the government. And that's why you can have inflation, you can have deflation, you can have you know, prices going up, prices going down, prices staying the same. It's all because the government ultimately controls that. So then, what that means then is when you participate in the monetary system of the government, then really you're yielding your power to the government, which, I mean, you have to do because that's where you live and you go, go by the rules of the government and even Romans 13 tells you to go by what the government says, pay your taxes. But it's not, um, it's not any, in other words, although God has ordained the powers that be, the monetary system is controlled by, um, by people who are not godly. It's by a, it's a material, a materialistic system. And so that's why the love of money is such a bad thing, because if you are, since money is involved with a, with a worldly system, then if you love money, then you love the world, is the problem. And Jesus says, love not the world, or the things of the world. And, and so your focus is on the world. And Jesus says, what will it profit a man if he gain the whole world, but lose his own soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Ultimately, under the Antichrist system, he's going to control, control the world's money supply. If you don't take his mark, you can't get anything because his money system is going to be that mark. And so what Jesus says is he, he figures out, he says, well, money, although it's necessary, I don't want to be tempted by it, to be controlled by it, to love it, to have it consume my thoughts. And so I am going to give my money when I get it. And you know that he could have been a rich man, monetarily speaking. I mean, I think of Benny Hinn and the scam he was running with these fake miracles that he did. And you know, millions of dollars pouring into his ministry uh, from people, giving all kinds of money. Because if, if you can heal people, at least claim it, and you think that people are being healed, I mean, people will give their entire life savings just to be healed of some physical ailment that they have. So he was raking in the money. Well, you look at Jesus. Jesus wasn't doing fake miracles. He was doing real miracles. And he didn't look at the people in the line wanting to get healed and say, Oh, you're in a wheelchair. Well, you, you step out. We won't heal you. Oh, you got a headache? Okay, come on up. You know, we can, we'll heal you of the headache. Jesus was healing everybody. And it wasn't fake. It was real. So Jesus is really healing all these people, everybody who came to him. So you know he could have, if he wanted to, had a bunch of money. He even had somebody that came to Peter and he wanted to have the power to give the Holy Ghost to people. And he wanted to give Peter money 
to get the power to give the Holy Ghost to people. He said, your money perish with you. You know, this isn't a monetary system here. This is a spiritual system. We're not concerned with the things of this world. We're concerned with the things of God. And uh, so, Jesus, he could have been a very rich man, monetarily speaking, because of all these miracles he was doing. And yet, any money that came in, he gave it to Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot was the traitor. Uh, he was the treasurer. And he was stealing the money. But you look at it, you had 12 people, 12 disciples. If Jesus wanted to give it to somebody responsible, why not give it to Matthew? Matthew was a tax collector, apparently an honest tax collector. He was used to money coming in that wasn't his, collecting the taxes for the government, and then giving it, remitted it to the government. Uh, so he had a job involved with handling money that was not his, and giving it to the appropriate authorities. Uh, why not have Matthew be the treasurer? Because he was an honest guy with the money. You know that whatever money Jesus got, it, um, Matthew would have used it honestly. Well, the problem is that because he would have used it honestly, then you would have seen the bank account. I mean, maybe they don't have a bank account, but you've seen the bag, bag with the dollar sign on it that Matthew's holding. <laughs> It'd have more and more money in it because he's using it responsibly and probably more money is coming in than what is needed because of all the miracles Jesus is doing. So, the, you would think the responsible thing, you know Jesus, it's not like he was ignorant of the whole thing. It's, like, it's not like Jesus says, well, I didn't know Judas Iscariot was stealing all that money and keeping it himself. Well, no, he knew. He's God. He knew exactly what was going on. The most responsible person to give that money to as the treasurer would have been Matthew, I think. Um, certainly not Judas Iscariot. And yet he gives it to the a thief. And he does it on purpose. Why? Because if Matthew had it, the money would start piling up. And then it would be a temptation. And they say, wow, you know, we need to keep doing these miracles. We need to go and we need to heal more and more people so we can get more and more money. And it would have been a, they would have been after the love of money and thinking the things they can have in this material world. So what Jesus does is he says, I'm intentionally going to give this money to a thief so that we don't have the money piling up so that you understand that what's important isn't the things of the world and money, but what's important is the things of God. And so then, remember, if you've got things, if you're basing, if your your thoughts and your affections are on things above, the things of God, well then you're rejoicing in the spiritual things that you have, and so you have true joy. But if you're going for money and the things of this world, which is very fleeting, that governments can change it around all the time. And by the way, they would probably have a reason to accuse Jesus if he has a bunch of money, look at the pastors today, mega church pastors, they got million dollar, multi-million dollar mansions and all this fancy suits and all these things. And so people don't listen to them because of that. Even look at Paul, when Paul was there at the Corinthians, the Corinthians were carnal and he wouldn't take any money from them. He says, I robbed other churches to pay for my expenses here because, because you're carnal because you love money, you're more likely to say, oh, well, Paul is just doing this for the money. And man, because he walks by sight, would focus on the material aspect and not the, uh, not the spiritual aspect. And so Paul removes the material aspect by not taking any money from the Corinthians. Jesus removes the material aspect by giving the money to a thief, Judas Iscariot. It's, it's important, our spiritual well-being is so important that both Paul and Jesus intentionally, I mean Paul, 2 Corinthians 6, 4 says that Paul was in necessities. He didn't even have his food and shelter and clothing, you know, the necessary things that he needed. Um, even though he, preaching the gospel, should live by the gospel, you don't muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and so he should be getting money to support him, yet he doesn't take all that he, you know, would need to make his basic, basic necessities, lest it hinders the gospel. And Jesus doesn't take all that money, he gives it to a thief to get rid of, lest it hinders the walk of the 
the spiritual walk of the 12 disciples unless it hinders him giving the gospel out. So that shows our attitude, what our attitude should be toward money. And here I am going to work at a job where I'm going to earn money and, and I'm, because I need that money to buy things. But we shouldn't be so consumed with money that we say, well, we got to make sure that we have these great investments or we got to make sure that we get a uh, high education and get uh, you know, good wages and that we suck up to the boss and do all these favors and try to get into the political system and try to just move up and up into this world because then our focus is on the things of this world and when we love money, the love of money is the root of all evil because once I have my love not being of God but my love is of money, well then the root isn't in, you know, Romans 11 says about the root of the olive tree. If we are grafted into the olive tree, which is the Holy Ghost, then we take of the root, partake of the root. The root is the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we read sound doctrine, we get sound doctrine in the inner man from Paul's epistles and uh, base our lives upon that using the mind of Christ, then we've got the root of all good, the Lord Jesus Christ operating in our life. But when we love money, then instead of using the root of the olive tree, the Lord Jesus Christ, then we're using the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. And so when we covet after that, then we're going to err from the faith because we're not getting our nourishment from the head, the Lord Jesus Christ, the sound doctrine found in Paul's epistles. We're getting, our, we're getting malnourished from the things of this world because it's all based on that monetary system. When we love money, and money is controlled by the world and it controls all the economic resources through that money. So then when we love that, then we're loving and desiring the things of the world. And that means then it's, then our priorities are going to be material and not spiritual. And so then we follow the things of the world rather than the things of God, which is why we err from the faith. So it's a completely different system. Money is that, uh, the love of money is the the system of evil and the love is the root and so then it just grows the tree of evil grows from the love of money well the olive tree grows from the root of the Lord Jesus Christ so if you want to do things serving the Lord and getting spiritual nourishment from the Lord Jesus Christ then you read and believe God's Word get the sound doctrine in the inner man from Paul's epistles and use the mind of Christ to apply it if you want to go after the things of this world and neglect the spiritual things and err from the faith, then you go after the love of money. And you can see it's such a danger, love of money is such a dangerous thing that Jesus gives his money to a thief and Paul is in necessities, not having necessary food and clothing and shelter at all times because he's considering the gospel better. He would rather starve. He'd rather not eat for a day if it meant someone could be saved as a result. So um, our focus then should be on God and His Word and having Christ live in us, presenting our bodies living sacrifices and not loving money because when you love money, your heart is going to be after the material, not the spiritual. Thanks for watching.